Well, for more on this, Mr. Robert Ords, a political analyst, is joining us over the phone. Mr. Ords, of course, the Munich conference has obviously highlighted this rift between the EU and the US about how best to deal with the Ukraine crisis. How do you think this rift is going to actually affect solving the current crisis if these geopolitical powers are in conflict here? Well, the worst solution would be for America to supply more weapons to the Kiev authorities who, of course, took power in a coup in February 2014. That would really fulfill Russia's worst fears about encirclement and aggression from both the European Union, America and NATO. That would be the wrong approach. European Union leaders such as Angela Merkel and Francois Hollande in France, the president of France, are slowly recognizing that there is a case for the people who are in Donetsk and Luhansk regions, which were formerly part of Ukraine but are now essentially self-governing, or at least part of those territories are self-governing, need to have autonomy, need to ha decide their own future. They've been fighting now against the Kiev uh, coup-imposed authorities. They're not rebels because they're just rejecting an illegal change of government which took place in Ukraine a year ago. There are asserting their right to have self-determination and to manage their own affairs and not be dominated by the extremists in Kiev who have been subjecting them to a vicious yes. bomb bombardment of killing many civilians. And so of course, the future is, is that European Union leaders need to reject American interference within Ukraine, which has caused so much damage, and recognise that the eastern parts of Ukraine need to become self-governing and free from the influence of the United States and the European Union. And as you just rightly mentioned there, one of the things and one of the points that was mentioned during the German Franco uh, uh, peace initiation or peace process is the fact that they want to give a bit more autonomy to these regions in the east of Ukraine. And we know that the Russians, the Ukrainians and, not the Ukrainians, sorry, the Russians, the Germans and the Fra French are supposed to be in a phone conversation with Mr Poroshenko on Sunday to discuss this peace plan further. Do you think Mr Poroshenko now will decide to go ahead with this peace plan, or do you think he's going to be lured, lured in by the US uh, uh, mulling uh, the fact that they might actually give them this lethal weapons? Ultimately, Petro Poroshenko, the current president of Ukraine, would want a military solution, but he cannot follow that route because, of course, the Ukrainian militias, the Ukrainian army, and these extremist militias that are being incorporated within the Ukrainian National Guard have been losing the war against the separatists, the people of Donetsk and Luhansk, but the possibly, militias that have fought possibly against them. So they... he will have to accept a political solution. But Poroshenko... possibly if they get these weapons from the United States, then they might think that that could obviously give them a better chance of solving it militarily. Throughout this whole process, uh, the American Vice President Joe Biden and the American authorities have been encouraging the Kiev authorities, the, the people currently in charge of most of Ukraine, to wage war against the people of the east of Ukraine. They have been encouraging what has been a vicious war. Unfortunately, or fortunately, they have, they have been losing that war. So, really, America may well, in the end, supply some weapons to Ukraine. They certainly want to supply more weapons, but that will just lead to a greater escalation. That will lead to Russia resisting American into further American interference within Ukraine and will ultimately lead to the Kiev government's ultimate and catastrophic for them defeat. So America should stay out. They don't understand what's going on. They provoke this whole crisis and should mind their own business because people are dying largely as a result of America, and particularly Vice President Joe Biden, encouraging the Kiev government to wage war against the separatist regions in the east of Ukraine. And the only reason that Poroshenko is considering these negotiations now is because he is firmly losing the war. Around 8,000 Ukrainian soldiers and their supporting militias are encircled in an area known as the Jibeltsiva Pocket. They are firmly losing the war. Donetsk Airport has, is now under the control of the Donetsk People's Republic, a self, now a self-governing entity. Yes. 
and the Ukrainian army is in retreat because really people in the east of Ukraine do not want to be run by Kiev. And they we know, do not want the... And we know that obviously the war is, is, is taking part and taking shape in the east of the country, but the entire country is suffering economically because of this crisis and because obviously they need loans from the IMF and the IMF won't give this money unless the conflict does stop. So in inevitably here the, the Ukraine government the Kiev government is actually facing a second type of war, which is an economic war, don't you think? Absolutely, yes. The, also, the IMF will only give loans in condition for the Kiev government imposing a, an austerity regime, which will actually be economically counterproductive, as we've seen in Greece and other parts of Europe, which have suffered as a result of EU and IMF imposed austerity. So... Ukraine cannot afford this war, and it is only really a small clique within Ukraine that's actually waging this war. Many Ukrainian people do not want to be engaged in a fight against the people of the east of Ukraine. Many people are rejecting the conscription of, of citizens of Ukraine into the Ukrainian army because they do not want to take part in this war, and it's only really extremist militias who are forcing the government and Petro Poroshenko into waging this war, as well as the role of the United States. Yes, sir, and in most people in Ukraine want actually peace. They, they cannot afford this war. It's, they are currently losing it. And really what they need to do is recognize that the east of Ukraine should indeed be autonomous, self-governing, and choose their own future. Mr. Robert Alls, I'm going to have to stop you there, but thank you very much for joining us over the phone from London.